I have in front of me all of the materials I need to complete part one of making my Andra Tutto Bene embroidered rainbow. Um, what I need to do first before anything is take my fabric and um, find an inset with the diameter of three and a half inches. Um, you can go around your house and find objects that have three and a half inches. I found a coffee mug that has three and a half inches. If it's just a little less than three and a half inches, that's okay. But if it's more, um, you won't have enough thread to complete your project. So just make sure to keep it three and a half inches in diameter or a little less if you can. Um, so you'll go on a hunt to search for this. And what you're gonna do is take your object Place it on your material. I would say gauge it about midway down. And you're going to take your pencil and just make a mark for your first arch. This is going to be your red where you're going to embroider your red on your thing. Great. We don't want it to be too dark and we're going to I did about halfway across my mug. So I have an arch of my rainbow and you can see it right here. Okay, the next step that we're gonna do is place our fabric back on our embroidery hoops. Like so. You can use this to tighten it for us. And this will secure our surface as we are embroidering. Um, we're going to take our needles, um, place them onto our thread, not the end. I always double knot it. If you want to triple knot it, you can as well. And make sure that um, your thread is hanging about mid-length from your longer piece of thread. Um, we're not going to be doubling it up. We're going to have it hanging here. Great. So we're going to start off with the running stitch and please follow along with the embroidery stitch guide that I have provided you with via email. And we always, when we're stitching, we always make our first stitch from the back of our piece. Great. And with our stitches, we're going to make them about the size. And we want to make sure to follow the lines nice and carefully as we're going through this, that nice line that we made from our, our inset. Another good thing to keep in mind is to also make each stitch even with the last stitch that you made. So you have a nice cohesive pattern as you're going through. And I'm going to follow this throughout my entire rainbow arch. And when I head over to the next color, to orange, I can find another inset that is a little smaller in diameter, or I can just simply create another arch by using my free hand drawing skills, which is what I highly recommend doing. If we take a look at the example over here of a finished product, we can see that the arches are just a little bit in between, so they're not going to go right next to each other. There's going to be a little bit of a gap in between. Now on to the clouds. Um, the clouds, the first step that we're going to be doing for making the clouds is drawing the outline of our cloud. Um, this is a big white poofy cloud, also known as a cumulus cloud. And there are many different kinds of clouds in the sky. 
Um, I chose to do a cumulus cloud because um, I liked the poofiness of it. And I used a um, disappearing ink pen to draw my outline. You can also use a pencil at your, um, I'm sure that you have a pencil at your house and you're gonna draw the outline of your cumulus cloud. Um, when we're drawing the outline of our cumulus cloud, um, we wanna make sure that we have a few poofs um, but we definitely want to avoid <clears throat> too many poofs because this will be really, really tricky to embroider. It's going to be a little dicey. So um, let's make sure those poofs are nice and wide. Um, to think about how big we want our cumulus clouds to be, I measured just with my fingers. So I measured about a length, the length of my pinky and on either side, I have a length um, on the edges there. So your fingers might be, are most likely gonna be smaller than mine. So you might wanna use two fingers um, and use that as your guiding point. So um, once we have this all set up, I'm going to, we're gonna grab our needles and our white thread Okay, as we make our first stitch, we're gonna um, place the needle and come in through the back so that our knot um, is on the back of the embroidery piece instead of in the front. We don't wanna see those knots. We're gonna have the stitch come all the way through and we're gonna um, place the next stitch um, just about here, okay? string place it all around and before completing that stitch we're actually gonna go from the back and create another stitch right in the middle there okay we're gonna come through and as we're pulling the string through what I do I do a little trick I take the last two fingers and I hold them as I'm bringing the stitch up to avoid um, the thread coming out um, we don't have, we don't want to, um, string that needle too many times. Great. So the next stitch we're going to do, we're going to come over here. Okay. And, and this time we're going to take our needle and we're going to poke it through right next to that last stitch there. Okay. going around here okay so next we are going to fill in our clouds by creating stitches that go um, in a straight lines all the way across like so um, and these stitches are called satin stitches so what we'll do is just like with any stitch we're gonna start from the back pull our stitch up and we're gonna start that stitch right around the edge of our outline stitch and we're gonna create another stitch right across from it pull that through we've just made our first stitch so now we're gonna come up right next to the last stitch we just made okay oops find that stitch pull that through and come up right directly across next to that last stitch we made up here. Okay, pull that through and now we're gonna go next to the last stitch that just came through up here. Make sure to make these stitches nice and close together. Take your time, make sure they're nice and straight. And what this stitch does is it creates a sense of dimension to our clouds, meaning that they look more three-dimensional. Okay, and we're gonna follow this pattern all the way through. Okay, I'm trying to cover up my markings here from my pen. Coming up, and we're gonna follow the same method all the way through. Now, if I end up um, I want to make sure, I want to check the back of my cloud and make sure that these stitches aren't going to be um, 
formed on the back because as you can see with my other cloud, I did it like this to show you that um, if you create the stitches um, like this, um, it looks nice from the back, but we won't be seeing the back and that will waste our thread. And we can... Okay, so on to writing our slogan, which is Andra tutto bene, which means everything's gonna be all right or everything will be fine in Italian. So um, first off, grab your thread from your materials packet. Um, you should have a longer piece of colored thread. This could be purple or blue or pink. Um, you'll definitely know which one it is because it's gonna be a lot longer than the other colors from the rainbow. Um, also make sure to write out your writing very carefully beforehand and measure that it's not too big. Um, my thread that I used was the same length as yours that you've been given in your materials packet and my uppercase letters are a half inch long and my lowercase letters are a quarter inch long just to give you a sense of how big you want to make your writing. I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the um, final part of my writing which is going to be my exclamation point and we're going to learn the back stitch. So with a back stitch, please follow along with your embroidery stitch um, handout as well as watching this video. So I'm going to make really, really small stitches and I hope you can check them out on here. So I'm going to start with just making a basic stitch coming down. We always start from the back. Yep, there we go. And then what I'm going to do is come up about the same length as I just made my first stitch. And then I'm going to follow that back, go right against it right there. It's going to look a little bit like the running stitch, but instead of having spaces in between, we're going to try and close those gaps so that we can have nice, clear writing for our message. So I'm going to go again, skip a little bit, go the length of the stitch, and then come back in our back stitch. Whoop. It's going to look something like that. I'm making really teeny stitches because when we're making our writing, there's lots of curves and corners to go around. And we wanna be nice and careful. Great. 